Hi everyone, my name is Purim. I'm a postdoc in the Machine Learning and Analytics Group Scientific Data Division. Today I will talk about my research on Superbench, a super resolution benchmark dataset for scientific machine learning. Um, first of all, let me introduce the motivation of my research. So uh, modeling spatial temporal systems is fundamental to science and engineering problems. It provides an accurate description of reality and insightful system evaluations. For example, we typically do high fidelity simulations for multidisciplinary analysis and design. Despite the great progress made in the past few decades, the computational cost is still very um, expensive for some extreme scale simulations. As shown in the bottom figure, such a large scale simulation has a very high resolution of 10,048 cubic um, grids, which requires over 8,000 processors and uh, 45 million CPU hour computing time. And it's just for one fold simulation. When it comes to inverse analysis or data simulation, this will be a very challenging task. So recently, due to the great success in artificial intelligence, many researchers also explored the potential of deep learning for dynamical systems. Um, deep learning methods can provide a good trade-off between solution accuracy and the computational efficiency. Also for real-world scenarios, we usually do not have huge amounts of data and sometimes we only have partial knowledge about some natural phenomena. So here, um, deep learning can provide a good opportunity to combine some data and some knowledge to solve the real world problems. Our research focuses on the super resolution of scientific data. Super resolution is an image processing technique to enhance the image resolution and details. It aims to generate a higher resolution version of images from lower resolution input images. It improves clarity, sharpness, and fine scale details. For the scientific data, we also have a similar problem. For example, generating coarse green simulation data is very cheap, but simulating fine scale scientific data is numerically expensive. So here, can we utilize the idea of super resolution to improve the quality of scientific data based on the coarse grain simulations? This is an active research area in scientific machine learning. However, there is a lack of benchmark data set for comparing and evaluating the performance of super resolution models. Therefore, we establish a super bench data set which consists of high resolution simulation data from different physical systems. Also, we measure the effectiveness of the existing super resolution models for scientific data by considering different evaluation matrix and different data degradation methods. In specific, there are four datasets of high resolution simulations in fluid flows, cosmology, and climate science. We provide two fluid turbulence datasets with different Reynolds numbers, 16,000 and 32,000. The fluid data is generated with finite difference method. The spatial resolution is 1024 by 1024. We consider three channels, including two velocity variables in the X and Y directions and the vorticity field. For the cosmology data, we provide two independent pairs of low resolution and high resolution simulations. We use the Nix software from Berkeley Lab to generate the simulation datasets. The spatial resolution is 2048 by 2048. Both datasets comprise of the temperature and the baryon density variables. Thirdly, the weather data is modified from ERA-5 dataset, which is publicly available from the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. We consider a subset of this huge dataset with 10-year time range 
and the spatial resolution of 720 by 1440, where the data includes three channels for conducting the super resolution experiments. The kin kinetic energy at 10 meters from surface, the temperature at 2 meters from surface, and the total column water vapor. The entire Superbench dataset takes up over 250 gigabytes. Um, we consider six baseline models ranging from classic methods to deep learning approaches. For example, the traditional bicubic interpolation, conventional neural network-based deep learning methods, ResNet architectures, and the swing transformer-based models. The other two contributions of Superbench are that we consider different data degradation schemes and different types of evaluation matrix for validating the performance of super resolution models. For the data degradation, we consider the general computer vision setup with bicubic downsampling. The second one is to mimic the experimental setup by using the uniform downsampling and the, the potential noise. The third one is to directly use low resolution simulation data as inputs. We consider two upsampling factors for a comprehensive analysis, eight times and 16 times. For the evaluation matrix, we consider pixel-wise differences, such as relative reconstruction accuracy and the extreme statistical properties. We also consider some metrics from measuring human level perceptions like SSM. In addition, since we are focusing on the scientific data, it's also important to measure the preservation of physical properties, such as the continuity for fluid flows. We have three major findings the first one is that it is challenging to capture the fine scale details in Superbench datasets, especially in weather data. The super resolution results tend to be blurred. Even the state of the art method, swing transformer, cannot reconstruct those fine scale details well, which is shown in the bottom right figure. Um, second, this it's it's pretty difficult to super resolve the low resolution simulation data. We show the representative snapshots in the bottom figures. The input data is data directly from the low resolution simulations. The large numerical arrows bring non-trivial challenges, especially for the cosmology data. The third finding is that. The pixel-wise accuracy doesn't guarantee the preservation of physical properties. As we can see in the bottom figure, the blue dots and the red dots represent the 8 times and 16 times upcycling factors. The left two figures show the pixel-wise reconstruction accuracy, and the right part show the physics arrows. We can see that swing transformer performs pretty well for the relative reconstruction arrows, but it doesn't show the best performance for the physical arrows. To conclude, we propose Superbench, a new large scale and high, high quality scientific data for super resolution. We analyze baseline models on different data degradation and uh, evaluation matrix and we identify the challenges or super resolution methods in the Superbench datasets. We hope our work can inspire new methodologies for super resolution in scientific applications. That is all my presentation. Thank you.